how to do an API call in make no code automation. First, what is an API? Why do we need it? Why do we need to know how to use it? And how can we actually apply it in no code automation with make? That's what we're going to look into today. So stay tuned. Hey, my name is Manuel and I'm the founder of TechSlaughter.ai and We Love Automation. Today, we are going to look into a very hot topic. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. A lot of people are asking about that. How can you make API calls with make no code automation? First, what is an API? An API is an application programming interface. And that means that the software is providing URLs that you can send data to in order to modify certain settings inside that software, add data to that software, or retrieve certain information from that software that you can use to connect to another software. So it's an interface that the software provides for developers to enhance the functionality and get data out and into the system. Why would you need to learn how to use an API with Make? Because on Make, there are a lot of predefined modules already available like Google Sheets, Google Docs, Gmail, Shopify, whatever. And there might be the case where you have an app that is missing. For example, if we search for an app called Spoonyakler, uh, which outputs or it generates meal plans and stuff, it's not available. That means we can't really connect to it, but we can because we have the ability to create HTTP requests which are connecting to an API. So the HTTP make a request module is the one that we are going to look at. It has a URL that we want to send or get data from. It has a certain method like get method is probably the most famous one where we retrieve data, post where we send data, put where we update data, patch where we update parts of data, delete where we delete something. So um, get and post are the ones that you will probably need the most. And we will go through some examples of how you can use this with an example API documentation. And I will show you exactly how to do it. In case you didn't know, we have the Make Simplified Accelerator, which is a fully advanced course on how to use Make from A to Z. It really covers every single aspect, including how to use APIs properly, what tools you can use to simplify the process, uh, walking you through sample data, providing you a lot of real live use cases, as well as providing outstanding support to you. And you can find more information about it in the description below this video. And it's fully on demand and it's suited for beginners as well as very advanced people. Everyone has something to learn in there. And we're sharing all our experience of the past over seven years that we've been working with Integumod, which is now Make. So check out the description below this video. Check out our course that we're offering there to get all the nitty gritty stuff and fun stuff that you can do with Make. Let's jump back into our example working with APIs. So first I want to get into a sample documentation and then we will walk through it one by one. All right. So I've chosen the Spoonacular API because it is free. So you can create yourself an account and you can test it out. It has a free plan over here with 150 points per day. And then like for each request, it costs a certain amount of points. So if we check over here, my daily quota is 150. And so far I've used up 4.4 points. So you can just play around, test it and get the nitty gritty stuff of working with APIs. So. First, in your profile, you'll find an API key, and that is what we're going to need later on. Then we are going to go to the docs, the full documentation. Usually every every software that provides an API has some sort of documentation at the very bottom of the site or uh, linked at the top, like here, docs. Or there's also a hack that you can use Google with a site search and uh, domain and then search for API. And that way, oftentimes you can find the documentation. 
Now, the documentation has a lot of endpoints over here. These are the URLs, they're called endpoints, and you can find all the different things that you can do with this API. So, for example, you can search recipes, and therefore you have to call this URL with a certain authentication because, of course, the software needs to authenticate you and needs to know who's actually making these requests. And then you have certain parameters that you can send along to refund your search query. And here it also shows the method. So in that case, it's a get request. So you're getting information from that system. Now, first, before we can actually get started, because this will not work, it will, we are not authenticated yet. We have to search for authentication. And usually in every API recommendation, this is at the beginning over here. It's not at the beginning. It's down here under guides authentication. And that tells you how you can authenticate yourself and access this API. So let's look into this. It over here, it says you need an API key as a query parameter. So you have to append it to your URL with a question mark. And then every additional parameter would be uh, separated by an ampersand so it would look like this and luckily make handles that for you and then please further note that the parameters are case sensitive so it needs to be api and then the k needs to be uppercase and not like all lowercase alternatively you can also put the api key in the request header as x dash api dash key so both methods work so you can either use it as a query parameter or in the header as x api key all right now let's do that first in make we have the url right now we don't know it yet because we haven't selected a specific one so here is the header so whenever you want to add header you could use it here edit here x api key and then paste the api key that you have just created on spinecular so show hide api key and then copy this one no worries i will generate a new one after this video so you can copy and paste it in here and then we are just going to do a very simple request with the first url so search the recipes then we're just going to copy this url paste it in here and then one thing i always recommend doing with the http uh, make a request module is to parse the response and set this to yes so, all right, let's try this out quickly to see if there's any output. It looks good. There's a green here. Uh, that means it's okay. And the status code 200 means everything went good. And we're actually getting recipes out. So here we have an array as output with red lentil soup with chicken and turnips. <laughs> Sorry, turnips and an image that goes along an ID where you can probably get more details about this recipe. And it has like uh, 10 different recipes coming out of this API. Now that the authentication works, we can continue with like another request. So let's look at generating a meal plan. You can find it on the left hand side under meal planning and then generate a meal plan. We have the content type application JSON. So that is usually by default, but we can also add it into the header. So let's look into this. I'm modifying the header, headers, item, X API key, and then content type application JSON. That basically tells the API what type of format the data is that we are going to send. This is usually only relevant when you're sending a post request, but also sometimes it's relevant for the get request. All right, that's the first step. And now the second is we need to check the parameters. So what do we actually want to get? Like what are the specifics of our request? Usually we have a name over here, like time frame, target calories, diet, and exclude. We have a type or what kind of parameter that is, a string, number, string, string, then example data and like uh, allowed values. For example, here for a time frame, you can either be day or week, and we can just enter that. Let's start by setting it up. So we want to have the time frame. We can just copy it. It's a query string parameter. So I'm adding it under query string, add a parameter, query string time frame is a day. And then looking back into our um, documentation, target calories, it's a number. So I can just enter, let's say 2,500 target calories. And then the next parameter is diet, a vegetarian. Yes, I think vegetarian is fine, vegetarian. And then the last parameter that we want to use is exclude. Like oftentimes you don't need 
parameters at all and it's highlighted if there's any parameter required and those ones you need to include and others are just optional over here it seems like all parameters are optional because nothing is specifically highlighted and therefore we could use it but we don't have to i want to exclude olives and maybe crap all right so let's see what that outputs if we run this once we can see okay there's a 200 status code which means all is good that's perfect and actually i forgot to update the url so i have to use of course the meal planner generate url over here so let's do that now save okay and run this and it still outputs 200 so that's good and our collection meals we have finger foods frittata muffins pasta with feta cheese and asparagus and we have quick wedgie stir fry all right so that outputs three meals and then even the nutritions are being shown for calories protein fat and carbohydrates so you can really generate detailed meal plans with this api pretty cool right next I want to do a post request. So let's rename that generate meal plan. And I want to create a new one. I will just duplicate this one. So it contains the X API key already and the content type. So I don't have to retype it every single time. Now let's look into another one, which is compute glycemic load. So we want to know what is the glycemic load of certain ingredients. And I just copy the URL first into my scenario and like this. And then I go back and it says post over here. So that is a post request. And oftentimes when you have a post request, you need to insert a body. And if you have a get request, you need to insert query strings. So right now I'll remove all query strings because we're not going to use them for the post request. And like this, okay. Then I will call it post compute glycemic load just so we have it properly named and now i'm going to check the specifics all right it requires a post body and it can also use like a language here so for the post body i will just copy this one and the body type usually is raw and then application json and then um, you can also see this add, add on. It sets the content type request header. So it sets content type application JSON. That means we actually don't need this. All right. Now, first, let's format that nicely so we have it available. We can just go to JSON blob, copy and paste it, then click on this formatting here, and then copy and paste it back into your scenario. Now it looks a lot better and we can actually use it. So if you want to get the, the glycemic load of these ingredients, then you can simply type them in here. Let's check the API documentation. It just says JSON body. There's not much here, but you can probably just like include any free type uh, ingredients of a recipe. You can probably get it from a previous call. And then if you compute our glycemic load, it says status code 200. So all is good. And then the ingredients, we can see them here. There are even IDs of each ingredient, and then the glycemic index and the load, and then the total glycemic load is calculated over here. So that way, two glasses of water have zero glycemic load, by the way. So that way you can make it fully dynamic with your make automations and calculate a bunch of different things. All right, so the next in point I want to show you is getting ingredient substitutes for something that you maybe don't want to eat or want to replace in your meal so let's use that again and looking in the doc documentation it shows get so we need to change it to a get request again and then we don't have a body type here but it has like an item or a parameter and that is ingredient name and for example you can use butter to replace it and then it responds with something that you can use to replace butter in any recipe so let's say ingredient name and we want to replace butter and then press ok and we rename it accordingly so it's get and then the name of this endpoint is this over here get ingredient substitutes and if i run this now it shows data status code 200 again. So all is good ingredient butter found four substitutes for the ingredient. And here are the potential substitutes that you can use to replace butter 
in your recipe. All right, so that is how you can work with APIs. One more suggestion, you should always turn on the show advanced settings and then scroll to the very top and say yes to evaluate all stages errors except for 200 and 300 because otherwise your module will always look green. It will not throw an error. It'll simply show, okay, here's a 400 error code. Something is wrong with your API call, but you will not notice because your scenario will not tell you. That means always go to show advanced settings and turn on the valid all stages errors to yes. Actually, like all APIs are working pretty similar. There's always some sort of authentication. And then you have the URL that you want to call. You have a get or a post method in most cases. You need an API key uh, over here or at a query string. And then you have certain parameters that you want to add to the request in order to get out the data that you want to. And then you will get data in response that you can use further in your scenario. I hope this helped and you have understood APIs or at least the basics of APIs. If you really want to dive deep into this, I suggest looking into our course, the Make Simplified Accelerator, where we cover everything from A to Z that you need to know about Make and we support you along the way. So we really want to make sure that you can implement everything that you have just learned and that you can apply to your business or your client's business or in your job position that you're in and really make an impact with automation where you're at. Check out the description below this video for all the details about the Make Simplified Accelerator and thank you very much for watching.